Have you ever accidentally bought the wrong number of shares because you did the quick calculation in your head wrong? If you've been trading for more than three months, you have. It happens. You're in the heat of the moment. A stock pops up on your scanner and you're trying to buy $10,000 worth, but instead you forget to carry a zero in your head. So you only end up buying $1,000 worth. Then when that stock flies, you're pissed because you don't make anywhere near as much money as you're supposed to. It's going to happen when you have to do those calculations in your head. What if I told you there's a way in Thinkorswim that you can make sure that never happens again? You can make Thinkorswim inside of the strategy that you build itself tell you how many shares you should buy based on the dollar amount that you want to be in. If you look up in the top left of the chart that you're looking at right now, you'll see an example of that. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through a ThinkScript code tutorial of how you can create this yourself. So I know you're excited. Take the half second, hit the like button for me, and we'll jump right into the content. So on our chart behind my head here, we are running a strategy which longs when the nine simple moving average crosses above the 20 simple moving average and exits when vice versa happens. Not for the fact that this is any kind of real profitable strategy or anything like that, but just because it's simple to understand. So it helps me walk through other coding topics much easier, right? So what we're going to do, jump into the edit studies and we're going to jump into the code of this strategy. It's already created here in front of you. We're not going to create the whole strategy, but I'm going to show you obviously the couple of fun things you need to inject into your code in order to get that position size label automatically created. So first things first, up here in your inputs, we already have the short MA length and long MA length. Actually, first, let me show you this. With inputs, so these are, these are declared as inputs. That means that from your settings cog, you can come in and easily change these things, right? That's what input represents. That's important because what we're going to do is we're going to input a position size and we're going to set this to 10,000. So I'm saying that in when I trade, I want to take $10,000 positions. That's what this means. And as I just pointed out, whenever you want to come change this, all you do is click on the call and say, Trey, I don't want to trade 10,000. I only want to trade 2,500. All you would do is come change it like that, right? But for this sake, let's leave it at 10,000 and let's jump into the label. So you'll notice right away that nothing changes. It still buys, it still buys 100 shares here. Um, so sort of in the way, but nothing changes immediately, right? We haven't actually done anything. We haven't told the system anything to do with this number yet. We've just inputted the variable. So the last and, 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 and most important step we're going to take here is that we're going to come down and I'm going to make a new section for labels. Now in this section, this is where we're going to tell the machine, hey, I want a label to appear, which is what was appearing in the top left corner. If buy is true, I want a label to appear that tells me my position size divided by the current price of the stock. That's obviously how you decide how many shares you want to buy, right? So the, the uh, method that we're going to call is add label open and close parentheses. This is the method that you call in. Now we've given it no parameters, so it's mad at us, but I just want to show you this so that if you want to dig into this a little bit more yourself, this is the method you'll Google, Google add label think script, and you can search kind of all the parameters and all the possibilities of this. But for our case, the first parameter is win what conditions need to be true. So we're simply going to type in buy. We've already defined a buy. This is a, this is a custom uh, method that we have created for when we want to buy, when we want the strategy to enter, when the short MA crosses above the long MA. So when that is true, uh, this label should appear, right? Next, we start to type in what we want it to say. So I'm going to open parentheses and I'm going to type in buy space close parentheses. Then I'm going to enter a plus because this is where we're going to transfix a, a calculation onto the text, right? So as I mentioned, we want to see position size divided by close. That's how many shares we're going to buy. And then I am also going to set this to uh, the... Um, Sorry, I still need to be inside of this. The the kind of third and final parameter that I'm going to use is color. I'm just going to set it to color.green. I want it to be green when true. So if I hit apply, 
you will now see it pop up. Look at that, 200.3205. That is 10,000 divided by 49.92. It's a little bit ugly, Trey. I'm not, I don't want to buy 0 0.3205. I just want to buy 200. There's another variable you can call in to fix that, and that's going to be obviously the round variable, and we are going to encapsulate this calculation inside of the round, and we're going to set the second parameter of this method call is to what decimal point. So if I set it to one, you will notice this change to just 200.3. I don't want to buy fractions of shares. You probably don't want to buy fractions of shares. I don't believe that within Thinkorswim, you can even buy fractions of shares. So we're going to set it to zero. Now it just says buy 200. We did it. We just created our input position size for how much money we want. And we inputted a label for to show us that calculation, show us the number of shares. There's a couple of more things we need to set up though. But first, if you're looking at me like I'm speaking Chinese right now, which I'm sure a lot of you are, Trey, what the hell is any of this code? What does any of this mean? I don't know how to do this. I just don't have the time to learn how to do this. I would love to have a calculation like this, but I don't have the time. On my website, daytradingstrategies.net, if you sign up, you're going to get access to a plethora of proven strategies that already have these labels built in and can be adjusted easily from that input section so that you can type in how much money for each position you want to enter and you will automatically get these labels according to the strategies. Also, you're going to get access to I email me directly. So if you have any questions about how to create these labels, you'll get access to that on my website as well. Daytradingstrategies.net, top link in the description down below. We'll see you over there. Next, while we are adding labels, why don't we also add a label that tells us when our sell condition is true? When the 9 SMA crosses back below or is just less than the 20 SMA, let's have a little symbol pop up that lets us know our sell condition is true as well so that we don't perhaps miss a sell, especially on a swing trade. We might miss a sell at the end of the day because we don't see it coming and then get screwed with whatever happens overnight. So same thing, we're going to add label when sell is true. And for this this one, uh, all I really want it to say is sell. I don't need it to say sell X amount of shares or anything. I'm going to exit the whole position. So sell and let's go ahead and color this red. Close the parentheses and I spelled label wrong. Add label. There we go. Add label sell, say sell when it's red. Um, I know for a fact that on this strategy, SPY just sold. So there is an example of that working as well. So on Friday, SPY got a sell signal when this crossed below. It was popped up all day when it was true. And then so you kind of as you were scanning the swing trades, as you were scanning your positions, you could see, OK, it looks like I might be selling SPY at the end of the day to sort of prepare yourself for that. Right. Lastly, I've changed my position size, but. As it pertains to the back test, you will notice that the back test is still just always buying 100 shares no matter what. Well, if I'm changing my position size for, for I, the, the amount of dollars that I want to be taking in each trade, we should also represent that in our back test as well, right? So I'm going to jump into my add order method here where I have my add order just buy to open if buy is true. If my buy condition, once again, short MA crosses above long MA is true. This is the block the method, the call that actually makes that happen. Well, there's another parameter inside of this method called trade size. So I'm going to do trade size equals position size, position size. Remember our input parameter that we defined is 10,000 up here. And of course, divided by close. This is now much like the label that we have down here telling us how many shares we want to buy according to our size that we inputted. This is now going to change our entire back test to only take this many shares on each purchase. So if I hit apply, you will now notice that, you know, when SPY is trading at 438 and a half, it's buying 22 shares. When SPY was trading at closer to 315, it was buying 31 shares. So it's now buying $10,000 worth. And once again, if I come in, say, well, Trey, I want to take $25,000 worth in my trades. All you got to do, change that input, 
you will now notice taking 57, 55 shares. So very easy to adjust, very easy to change there. So that's going to be the video. In this video, you learned how to input position size and how to use that input to manipulate your backtest size and to create labels so that you no longer have to do any calculations yourself. If you're in the heat of the moment, if something pops on your scanner, if it meets your setup, there's no, okay, quick, what's 10,000 divided by 50, blah, 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 blah. Nope, it's just gonna tell you right there. So, okay, 501, type in 501, hit buy. That's all you gotta do. That's the video for the day. If you made it to the end of the video, I always say you guys are the ones taking your education very seriously. And I appreciate that. And I always want to give back to you guys. So for you all, and please don't let anybody else know this, for you all only, if you use discount code END at checkout on daytradingstrategies.net on my website, you're going to get your first month for only $15. So all the strategies that I showed, all my scanners, all my custom indicators, you're going to get access to for only $15 using discount code end link at the top of the description. Thank you. Big thank you for watching my entire videos. That's how I like to try to pay you back a little bit. So if you made it this far, you obviously enjoyed it. Take the half second, hit the like button. And if you're not already, I'm making videos like this for free nearly daily on this YouTube channel. And if you made it this far, you obviously enjoy it. So make sure you're subscribed. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this video. But I'm going to link you all to a video here in which I build custom scanners within Thinkorswim that are recommended to me from ChatGPT.